students i am ishan trivedi welcome you in the video lecture series today i am going to discuss about principle of architect composition in this topic i am going to cover the principle of architect composition in which these principles are unity mass composition contrast then contrast are further classified as contrast of form size tone and line furthermore there is proportion scale accentuation and rhythm balance and symmetry and at last there is a character character is also classified as functional character associate character and personal character in this session i am going to cover unity mass composition contrast and proportion so before going to these principles let us have understand what is the meaning of composition the composition means it is the expression of building for its effects which is depend upon the composition of plan and architectural design of a structure and this grouping of various elements putting them together with some definite order is the real meaning of composition if i take an example of a residential building in which there are various components such as foundation plinth doors and windows walls columns beams lintel chhajja coping parapet wall and roof slab if i want to design a building then i have to put this component in a such a manner that in totality whatever the function is associated with this all those elements are fulfilled and you will have a beautiful building so all those components need to be arranged in a definite order then and then their function and their significance can be met up together so let us have first is unity unity refers the harmony among the elements which cannot be split from each other here the unity does not mean a single it imparts the coherence of parts and integrity of the whole for example if i take a rectangle with the longer side is twice the shorter side means length is equal to twice the width then if i am cutting this rectangle when this rectangle is divided into two equal parts it gives a figure of two independent square in a joint position and ultimately this has destroyed the unity of the origin rectangle and has given the birth of duality understand here it gives the birth of duality here you can see if i take a rectangle having its length twice its width then if i cut it centrally then there will be two equal square so earlier what was that before the cutting of element it was a rectangle when i cut it then it is divided into two equal parts and its identity has destroyed and that's why it has given the birth of duality furthermore if the both the members of the duality are equally significant and are thus ultimately they are competing with each other in previous if there are number of arrangement is made and if i cut it then one part is giving the competition to the other part and that's why there is another problem has occurred and that is competition of elements to each other ultimately there are two problems one is the birth of duality and one part is giving the competition to the another part because there are repetition of elements and if i am cutting that part then one part is giving the competition to another part so our two main problems are duality and competition and at last the duality and competition destroy the element of unity you can see the figure so how would i eliminate this problem you can just eliminate by providing simple accent to that building which is dominate 
to that entire composition. Here you can see there is a little change at the central focal point and ultimately this results into the elements. Here you can see in the bottom figure, see there is a clock or clock tower is given in between. So this is a normal change and that is given to that building and which ultimately maintain the harmony of the building. So to maintain the unity and architectural composition, some central point or focal idea providing an interesting ascent should be clearly apparent to establish the relationship among all these elements. Again, you have seen in your surroundings in a building, you will see a clock tower and that clock tower is the central focal and the simple ascent that has introduced. So the entire building appearance would be different. Here I have taken the example of Taj Mahal. So this Taj Mahal is made up of different components. Here in the center you can see a rectangle is there and at its center you will see a dome. Even at the center you can see some voids are there and at last this result into the harmony of all those elements. See, even in this, if I cut it into two parts, you cannot bifurcate the shape of the one part. So, this central point is nothing but it is just to establish the relationship between all those elements. So, here I am ending the unity. Now, mass composition. Mass is a three dimensional shape having definite width, length, and height. These masses may be small or big, horizontal and vertical. It depends upon the position of observer. If one is looking at the building from its front, then he will enjoy its elevation. If he is looking at the building from its left, he cannot have the view of its right side. So it depends where is the position of observer. So the arrangement of these masses in the building are made up as per the functional requirement. See it depends what is the function that is that the building is going to serve after its construction. So whether that can be a small or big, tall or thin, then horizontal or vertical type of buildings are there. This mass arrangement is to be done in a such a way that the harmonious unity of the structure is maintained. This is possible by proper balance in the composition, harmony among the different masses and weighted adjustment of this mass. So how would I adjust this mass? So how would I adjust this mass? The development of masses is done from the both plan and elevation of the building. When I design a building, then these masses may be symmetrical or asymmetrical. If a mass is symmetrical like you can see in the figure 1, then there is only one major axis. If these masses are asymmetrical, then the building may have two or more major axes. You can see at the bottom figure and the minor axes are perpendicular to that major axis or it can be at any angle. Again. If mass is symmetrical, then their major axis and minor axis both are coincide with each other and there is only one axis and that is major axis only. If mass is asymmetrical, there is a birth of minor axis and these minor axis, two or more minor axis may be perpendicular to each other or it can be at any angle to major axis. So the arrangement of the masses may be done suitably around the axis for the proper balance, harmony and unity. So this is the explanation of mass composition. Now third is contrast. The contrast means the absence of monotony. Here what is monotony? Before going to the monotony, let us understand the monopoly. 
monopoly means if i am the only one who is delivering special services for the construction of building in entire city area then i can take my own rates and i do not care about the client and i'll provide the service based on my free time or based on my mood because i am the only one who is giving the certain kind of services in the construction industry this is what the my this is what the monopoly of the individual if there are more number of service provider then there will be competition of the service provider with each other then all the services will be provided at regular time interval and there will be no monopoly because there are more number of service provider who are there in the construction industry so there is absence of monopoly and that's why if there are more number of things then it is called absence of monotony the same thing is given to us by the god for any object visualization or for understanding of any objects we have five senses these are taste smell touch vision and listening through these five senses i can visualize and understand what is the object and based on that how would i react to that object for example if a milk is hot in the pot so how would i understand that milk is hot for that first is vision visually i can see if the vapor is coming out of from the milk then i can easily say yes the milk is hot other than that if i touch the milk or that pot then i can feel that yes the milk is hot but can i hear that can i smell that no so for understanding of any object or any element i have to receive from five different senses and that's why there is absence of monotony so in a similar manner in architectural design of any kind the contrast is required not only for achieving the proportion without monotony but for the creating the interest and the exhibition of variety a well conceived contrast may result in multiple division of expression and it causes the serious harm to unity so its purpose should be develop the aesthetic sense and maintaining the unity with variety furthermore this contrast is classified as contrast of form or shape contrast of line contrast of tone and at last contrast of size so let us have an understanding of this contrast first is contrast of form or shape this is due to shape or mass this shape may be surface or in dimensional area this shape includes any geometrical shapes like ellipse square or rectangle circle all the possessive properties of their form are included in the contrast of form next is contrast of line here these lines are in the direction as well as in different types if i am talking about line with the references to direction this includes straight line slant line curved line regular or irregular line or diagonal line when i am talking about its type then it can be braked line continuous line dotted line or zigzag line are the types of the contrast of line furthermore next is contrast of size this contrast of size is between the figure of the identical shapes and the types may also be achieved by the difference in their bulk and the sizes the rectangular door and the windows are the contrast with each other is the matter of size both the elements are made for its function the door cannot be the window and the window cannot be the door so 
their size and proportion is the contrast of their size and at last the contrast of tone this is obtained by surface treatments which results into different materials used for the construction and different color combination for example if you have seen in the elevation there are different texture open brick work or sometimes you will see the mosaic tile are fixed in the front elevation part of the building and at the other side the three sides are kept only plaster finish work so this is what the contrast of tone and texture of a building and their different sides so this is how you can achieve the contrast of tone so i am ending the contrast as a architect composition next is proportion the length and width multiply together and gives the area whereas length width and height will constitute the mass the dimension of length width and height with respect to one another will give the pleasing effect due to proportion maintained among them as we have studied it in ruminis a square living room fails to create a good impression but a rectangular one with the length to width ratio 1 gem 2 to 1 gem 5 which gives the pleasing impression due to proper proportion between width and length see we can have a difference of child and a man by its proportion in a similar manner in a building if these are in a proper proportionate then we can utilize the floor area and there will be proportion between length and width similarly the desirable properties of different units constituting the building will add to the aesthetic beauty and harmonious unity in elevation there will be solids and voids their relative proportion with each other imparts the pleasing effect the various elements of the structure may composed to fit in any one of these definite geometric shapes and because of this there is good proportion and unity can be effectively created so this is the proportion of principle of architect composition so i am ending this session here i hope you have learned these four principles of architect composition thank you